Hey everyone, it's me again. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Corey. My wife's name is Raquel. Uh, we wanted to do this video, or I think more I wanted to do this video on whether foreign brides are queens or slaves because having this channel, I've realized that uh, more than 50% of the comments are all positive. Everyone's like, you look so happy. She's so happy. You guys are entertaining. We really love it. Um, and a lot of them are jumping in saying that they've been married to a foreigner or they have a Filipina bride or, or maybe a Thai wife or a Vietnam, whatever. And they're happy. They've been happy for 5, 10, 15 years. And then the vast majority of the positive comments are all people saying that they love this lifestyle, they want it, and they uh, want to move over here, or maybe Indonesia or, or Thailand or Vietnam or something, and they want to find a more traditional woman. We'll just leave it at that. It's 98%, 97% all positive comments, and we love that. However, every video, you have some haters, that they like to call it, or people leaving negative comments about why foreigners are leaving the country and marrying abroad, which they all seem to insinuate that foreigners do it to have a slave instead of a wife, which I find very entertaining, honestly, I do. I laugh about it. Usually I'm reading the comments first thing in the morning and she's sleeping in. So I'm, I'm just laughing like, oh really, she's a slave, okay. <laughs> I'm up making yeah. my breakfast and she, she's yeah. sleeping in. But Sometimes I cook your breakfast. No, 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 I meant my smoothie before I work out. Ah, your smoothie. Yeah. Right, that's when I'm, I'm drinking my smoothie, right in the comments and I'm like, yeah, I got her because she's a slave, but you're sleeping upstairs in your king size bed and <laughs> a 25 by 25 foot bedroom with cathedral ceilings and she's a slave. I don't know, it doesn't make yeah. any sense to me. Woke up me, ate um, <laughs> But anyways, if you're new to the channel, uh, we've been married now for a couple years. We've been living in the Philippines for about a year and a half or a little bit less than that. Uh, she was with me in the States, married for quite a while and we wanted to address this. My, I look at my wife like she's a queen. I don't look at her like she's a slave. Mm. Have I ever told you to do anything? Have I ever ordered you to do anything? No. Okay, I'm just curious. Do you have a rough life? No. No, okay. <laughs> well, I already know that. I laugh trying to even ask you, but we have to. Uh, anyways, that, that being said, but I just want to say, you're not a, someone's not a queen just because they woke up saying they're a queen uh, or having a boss attitude, which is kind of what's going on in the West. There's 180,000 roughly females born every day. They're not all queens just because they woke up that day. So I just want to say, my wife's a queen because she treats me like a king. So I therefore treat her like a queen in yeah. return. It's not because she has an attitude of a queen that would not make her a queen. Because you're not a queen just because you feel like it. Yeah. My dad did not raise me saying, Corey, you're a prince and a king, you deserve the world. He said, work as hard as you can for as long as you can, and hopefully you'll find a good woman that will take care of The story I wanted to tell, I make this brief, set my wife apart from every girl I've ever talked to in my life and raise the bar so high that no one could ever touch it. And when I say that, we weren't even married yet. We were engaged and we were living together in the States. And I went to work, I was gone for, I don't know, 12, 13 hours that day, it was a horrible day. And I walk in the door, not a fun day, I'm stressed out, I'm still on the phone. I got my briefcase and my laptop bag, sorry. And I'm still on the phone and I'm stressed out. So I sit down at the kitchen table and she instantly walks over, she gets down on her knees and she starts taking my shoes off. And I, at first I'm confused, like, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> she's like, I'm untying your shoes. So then I'm like, why, what's wrong? Like, I didn't honestly understand why she was doing it. It didn't, it didn't click in. And she just kind of looked at me, so then I let my coworker go. And I'm like, is everything okay? And she's like, I can tell that you're stressed, like you had a hard day at work. And I'm like, right? And she's like, well, you did that to provide for us and take care of us, right? And I'm like, well, of course. And she's like, so the least I can do is take your shoes off. So it's moments like that. Yeah, I remember that. You're stressed. I can feel energy, so at least I can make you feel better in my own way. Right. And it, it was just that, that little gesture that takes, what, 10, 20 seconds a shoe? Maybe 30 if you're wearing construction boots. But the point is, it doesn't take a minute to do that. But my stress level when I walked in the door was here and it dropped down to like this. It was like nothing. And it made me appreciate her and value her so much compared to every girl I'd ever even spoken to 
other than maybe my mother, where it just set the bar so high. And I realized that yeah. I had a queen. I didn't, perfect timing, the dog screaming, raise the standards of the bar, so to speak. And it made me realize what I had because that just doesn't seem to exist anywhere. In the Western world, you could walk in the door with a alligator chewing on one arm and a pit bull on the other arm. And if you ask someone to help take your shoes off, they're gonna tell you you're sexist or something. So it just made me realize what I had because she treats me like a king. So therefore, I treat her like a queen in return. Yeah, it's vice versa. What you give, you have to So you just have to start it so people will like, you know do good things to you. Just, just yeah i remember the look on her face because she just kind of looked at me and said well you walked around the car to open my door why wouldn't i help you and it just you know she's right i get it i mean and then i kind of started thinking about you know flashbacks or memories of when i was a little kid and my mom would do that for my dad because he'd be working you know 12 15 plus hours a day he'd be exhausted when he walked in the door and she'd walk over and help take his boots off just because he was stressed out but nowadays, those little things, because it's little, I mean, like I said, 30 seconds to a minute max, yeah. makes a, me a man feel like he's a king. Yeah, I think that's, um, like, now I'm thinking why is foreign ones a traditional woman. At least I can pamper you or take care of you in my own way and makes you relieve your stress away. And like when we're both working, we're all stressed, who will take care of us? Like, or no. will like, you yeah. know, make you feel relaxed. It's very important. Now I, now I understand that as a couple. Realize she was a queen and treat her like a queen because of those kind of actions. Not because she has an attitude, she doesn't have an attitude of a queen at all. Okay, so as far as if, if she's a, a slave or do foreigners marry bri foreign brides to have slaves, um, what time do you get up every day? Mm -hmm. Eight, nine. <laughs> Uh, in between eight and nine. I tried um, seven. Yeah, you tried. You, then you took a nap. But um, okay. I just need coffee. <laughs> right. But what time do I get up? Five, six. Yeah, five or six. I'll go downstairs. I'll start my morning smoothie oh. in the blender, the ninja, uh, so I can get prepared <laughs> to work out. I'll respond to comments and emails, and then uh, generally I'll wake her up when I'm about to hit the gym or work out. But is did i get her to be a slave is that what slaves do sleep in every morning no do you feel like a slave <laughs> upstairs no <laughs> in that massive bedroom in the king size bed with the air conditioner with running hello big pillow <laughs> yeah she's got three pillows and a blanket i laugh because she's snuggling hello, one yeah it's so soft right but they're not slaves she's not a slave she's not treated like that she's a queen and i treat her like that so she sleeps in every morning do you you don't feel like a slave Never. <laughs> I control. I I can do whatever I want. And he let me like stop the gardening or anything. So no, I'm not being controlled. So that's and I'm very happy. It's like freedom to do what I want. Yeah, I mean, you end your day watching a movie on a massive TV and relaxing, eating dinner. Uh, not very stressed. Okay, so to address the three main negative comments that I get, because none of them have any legitimacy at all. I mean, none whatsoever. I mean, they're completely ignorant, and I don't mean to use the word ignorant as like I'm insulting the people writing it. Maybe there's another word. Well, no, it's okay to use the word ignorant because it just means lack of education in a certain area or topic. So. You okay. shouldn't make comments that are negative if you don't know anything about it. Uh, first one is that foreigners are marrying brides or getting slaves because they're uneducated and they're dumb and they don't know any better. Uh, I find that very funny because my wife has a bachelor's degree. She has four sisters that all have bachelor's degree. Oh wait, Jessica has a master's? Yeah, I think she's eight years in college. I don't know, I think she get mastered i'll have to check but the point yeah. is she has four sisters that all have bachelor's degree I, we think one of them actually has a master's i'd have to ask her i don't remember the point being is the amount of filipinas for example that go to college compared to us is the same percent that graduate high school and then go off to college so saying that they're uneducated would be insinuating everyone in the states is it has the same statistics so 
there's there's nothing to back that up or support it. So those comments aren't making any sense at all. Yeah, education here is very important. Yeah, yeah actually the facts and statistics that I looked up, I'm not going to get into all the boring aspects of it, but the actual criteria to graduate high school here is much stricter than the US. It's same for the college. So they're actually more challenging and harder. So to insinuate foreigners want foreign brides over here, for example, because they're uneducated, it doesn't actually make any sense. Like there's nothing to support or back that up. You could easily find an uneducated person in the US as you could in another country. All right, second negative comment. I always find this one entertaining as well that they're all poor, they're all in poverty, apparently they live under bridges or in boxes or something, I'm not sure what the thought is. We just look for them because they're poor and they don't have any money. Right, I, I'm well aware of that. Uh, if I was uh, living in another country looking in the States, for example, and I was looking into Chicago or LA or Detroit, or I, I can go on and on about all the bad neighborhoods and you just see the poverty and the drug infested areas and the zombies walking around, I wouldn't be making negative comments about poor people in other countries. When I met my wife, she had more money in the bank than any girl I had ever dated in the States. And I mean, in not in USD, it was in peso, but when we started shopping for land, she wanted to pay for it because she was adamant that she didn't, I didn't want her to pay for it. But the point was that she didn't want to think that I was trying to take advantage of her or something along the lat line where she was very comfortable she could just buy the land outright and she could she had a significant amount of savings yeah. so these comments they're not uh they're not accurate i mean is there poverty in in the philippines well of course there is there's poverty in every country they are not all in poverty here so that comment doesn't make any sense in the west you're going to be asked the same kind of five questions i noticed how much do you make a year or do you make over 75k if you say yes they want to know if you make over 100 or 120 if you contribute to 401k do you own a rent what kind of car do you drive they're asking you financial questions when you start dating someone she mm -hmm. never asked me how much i made how much i had in savings 401k if i owned or rented because those weren't important to her Yes. She asked me how I treated my family, how often I talked to them, did I like animals. She wanted to know my religious beliefs. She asked me the important things. Yeah, I miss that. I, I miss that. I remember that. It's more, uh, I get more like, um, um, what's that, interesting when you start like about family. I don't ask about money or anything, any financial because I just, I'm not comfortable. It's like, um. I'm not after for that, I'm after for, she's as him, like, yeah, a good guy, can be trusted, serious, you know, something like very important that I need in a man, not money, because I don't need that. I'm not like, I'm not grow up rich, we're not also poor, but we're okay. I have enough money actually, and you know, you saw my account, that's why he, he knows that how much I, I, um, my savings in my bank. I try to, yeah, that's the most important for me, especially my dad always told us, like, um, find a man better than him. So it was hard because it's just rare to find. Finding a man better than your dad would be. Yeah, it's, it's hard. So like most of my sister are still single. They're, um, Maybe standards because they wanted, like my dad, you know, if you know my dad, you will know. He's very simple, but big heart. So, like, when I found my husband, well, I found him. <laughs> so, like, and he, I think he's, he's the one. He's, I know you're not going to hurt me. I know your, your family, your, you know, he's um, share about his family, his dad. So, it's like, it's just nice, like you can share, mm. going to share about that kind of life to me. But it's, uh, again, they're not looking for foreigners because they want their money. I just want to make that clear. Now, someone's going to jump in and say, some are. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. sure. I'm not going to say there's no Filipinas that want men for their money, but let's be realistic here. Let's say there's a couple hundred Filipinas over here that want men for their money. Or let's say there's a couple thousand. Okay, let's say there's five or 10,000. 
I don't think there's that many, but let's say there is. How many Western women do you think are after men just for their money? <laughs> like, let's, let's be realistic. So trying to you know, insult an entire country and race saying all of them want money when it's a small fraction compared to the Western society, I find entertaining. Because when you look at, uh, what are they called? Sugar daddy, sugar baby relationships, they're open. And they don't even care because they just want their men for their money and the guy just wants a younger girl. And that's normal to society. I'm not saying it's okay. Insinuating everyone over here wants a man for their money when she doesn't ask me for money, it doesn't make any sense. There's nothing to back that up or support it. So there's over 200,000 foreigners living in this country and they're happy. Yes, there's been a, a small percent that's been hurt, but what's the what's the amount of people that have been hurt in a Western culture because finances in the relationship? It would be a million times more. That's just how it is. <laughs> how many do you have? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're rich. You have multiple foreigners. Is it floral? I think Gilard the floral. <laughs> yeah, she does okay. that quite a bit. She's like, I loved you, and I'm like, you loved me. You mean love? <laughs> Current or past no, tense? No, because it's just fun. We don't re recognize the D, that's past tense, but we pronounce it loved. Is it, that's past tense. For us, oh, it's the same. The third negative, most common comment that I get, which again, it's 97% positive, happy people, but that their grammar and their English is horrible and foreigners want a slave because they don't speak very good English and oh. they're not gonna argue. That's, that's uh, I find that very entertaining because my wife speaks three languages. All of her sisters speak at least three languages. Most Filipinas I talk to speak multiple languages. So I looked up the actual statistics in the States and 19 or 20% of high school graduates are bilingual and they speak two languages. Where in the Philippines, it's about 80% speak two languages. So I couldn't find statistics on three languages in the US because it said NA, which means it's under 1%. But in the Philippines, I couldn't find a national statistic, but I reached out to a few different school district, districts and all of them, their rate was in between 40 and 50% of their high school graduates spoke at least three languages. So insinuating that a foreigner wants a Filipina because she can't speak English doesn't wow. quite make a lot of sense. That's hard. How can you communicate? Well, I know. I, that doesn't... <laughs> You want her because she can't argue or talk, and I'm like, what? Oh. It doesn't make any sense. It's hard sometimes when I want to express, but you know, I'm learning much. It's it's not. It's hard to express my feelings. That yeah. So I mean, to touch on that, the last subject, one more uh, one more thing that I find entertaining is all the people saying you just want a foreign bride because of she can't speak good English. English is her third language. Yeah. Okay. Not not her first. Not her second. It's her third language. So it's really good considering that's her third language. It's very impressive. Yeah. And seeing as how all those negative comments, I look at their grammar and their slangs <laughs> um, and how they're actually speaking when they write down the negative comment. Her English is better than the people writing the negative comments. So it's not, uh, it's not a very good insult when her English is better than that. And yeah, no, but we've learned a lot because I'm very sarcastic. So she'll have to, She's adapted very well to yeah. my sarcasm, where at first I would say something sarcastic and she'd be like, really? And I'm like, no, that's not <laughs> true, I'm joking. Like, yeah, I didn't know that he's joking. So, you know, if I don't learn English well, so how can I communicate with him or joke with him or like, you know, fun with him? So that is very important. That's in, you doesn't have to learn <laughs> the language with that. I, this, our language, it takes years to, understand it like our english like we started grade i don't know what grade like grade three you already started have to learn english so just imagine from high school then college we're still learning that yeah. and until now we still and that's still not very good but i'm doing good i hope so <laughs> so yeah so it's hard it feels like it takes time but yeah but i mean the basic point is that foreigners or Western men want a foreign bride because they don't speak good English and they can't argue and things like that so they can be a slave. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. I mean, there's nothing to support or back that up. Statistics are the opposite of what you're saying. And again, the comments are, the grammar is so bad and the person writing the comment that 
<laughs> that it just, I don't know, you can't argue with, with people like that. But anyways. Um, your opinions too, so. Yeah, but I mean, I wanted to touch on these topics Sorry. because I read them every morning. And again, it's 97, 98% all positive, but when I'm writing to everyone and responding first thing in the morning and she's sleeping in and the air condition is running in the massive bed, I'm just like, oh really, okay, I wanted her because she's a slave. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it really doesn't. We've gone over the education statistics, gone over the, the English, poverty. King. She treats me like a king. It's, uh, they're not slaves, they're queens. Because, again, they treat their husband like kings. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's still your opinion, so we'll respect those. I don't think? know if I respect them, but they can have them. Yeah, that's, that's their, maybe they say that because of their experience, or oh, that's what we hear, so just at least they know now that our part, so at least they have like, so, ah, oh, okay, so not all, not, don't generalize everything, so just because of what you heard, of what you re read, of what's your experience, just be open to, you know, open-minded, not all is the same. Yeah. I appreciate everyone watching. Um, I hope this video is somewhat entertaining, but <laughs> as far as if they're queens or slaves, they're definitely, they're queens. They're, they're not slaves. King. Four men come over here because they find an amazing wife and they're happy. Yeah, that's the most important. And every time a guy talks to someone over here that's married, they tell them how happy they are, and then they're jealous and they want it too. It's yeah. not because they have slaves, so. It's inspiring. It's nice that we inspired people. You deserve to be happy. We all deserve to be happy. Men and women deserve to be happy. So it's your way to find happiness wherever in this world. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. Um, uh, one more thing I wanted to add. Out of the 3% of negative comments that I have gotten, I said, I'm sorry that you had such a bad experience in the Philippines, whether they said the education or the poverty or um, their, their English or whatever, whatever negative comment they left, I said, what part of the Philippines were you in? And nine out of 10 said, well, I've never been to the Philippines. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so you're yeah. insulting every female in the country and you've never been here. <laughs> so, you should experience, then you know. I just want to say the level of ignorance that it takes to leave that kind of comment with, you've never even been in the country. Yes. I want you to just think for like five or 10 seconds before you type something negative to see if yeah. it makes sense at all. Yeah, sometimes people generalize everything. It's just sad, you don't even experiencing it, so. It's, it's more than sad. I mean, it's racist and sexist to tell you the truth. I mean, you're making, you're insulting every female in the entire country based off of nothing because there's no fast facts or statistics to back up any of the negative comments. So, yep, and if we have any more negative comments, um, you know how I'll respond to them is I'm going to turn this camera around and we're gonna swim in our pool looking at the waterfall and read the negative comments and be really stressed out about them, so. Fun. Thank you for watching everyone. Um, Thank you. It's just our opinion on it and. Yeah, I hope it's, you know, brighten your. If you're happy over here and you're married or, you, or you're married to a Filipina in another country, I guarantee you that you're happy and you, you love her and you'll understand. And for the negative comments, well, I debunked all those. None of them have any legit legitimacy and none of them are accurate. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you guys and happy Sunday.